You're watching Florida Criminal Law TV. I'm your host, Stephen G. Cobb. Now, we've been going through different types of defenses, and now we're going to talk about something that I'm sure you're familiar with, and that is Williams Rule Evidence. Right about now, you're going, what? What the heck is the Williams Rule? Well, another way to describe it is similar fact evidence. Now, there's a rule of law that basically says, under certain circumstances and with notice to the opposing party, you may be able to use similar fact evidence. So in sex offense cases, it's not uncommon for the prosecution to bring in similar fact evidence. We saw that in the Cosby trial. We've seen that in many high profile sex offense trials where other people who are not part of the charging document, which in Florida is either an information of indictment or a grand jury indictment, usually an information, and they're allowed to testify because the facts they're alleging are so similar to the facts the prosecution is trying to prove. You may be wondering at this point, how does that play into the defense of my case or my family member's case or the case of someone I love or care about? And the answer is, first of all, you can contest the Williams rule if the prosecution is trying to use it. The facts are not similar enough is probably the most common defense. There are other things as well, but what I want to focus on is the defense can use that too. For example, you might find a scenario where someone has a habit of making false allegations of sex offenses and has done so previously in the past. If they are similar enough and notices provided to the prosecution, then, notice the if then, a lot of law is if then, if then. Well, in this case, then the judge may rule, notice I said may, not shall because it's not required, may rule that the defense can use this similar fact evidence. And this similar fact evidence may show a defense of fabrication. Another defense that people often don't consider is hearsay. And the one thing I hear most of the time when I'm asking a client to do a fact pattern report is, well, I didn't include this or that because it's hearsay. I'm like, no, include the hearsay. Well, why would I include hearsay? And I go, because of 90.803 and 90.804, and they're like, what? What's that? Well, Florida has two basic hearsay rules plus case law, and the statutory rules are found in Florida statute 90.803, which means the person making the out-of-court statement is living. And there are over 25 exceptions to the hearsay rule. So the basic rule is hearsay is admissible. Uh, sometimes it's not. But here's 25 reasons why it is. And under 90.804, that's where a witness is unavailable. Perhaps the witness is a foreign national who has returned to their country, but they made a recorded statement, and there's no way to bring them back. That's just an example. Under certain circumstances, there are a list of examples in that statute, 90.804, that hearsay can come in. One of the most common forms of hearsay that comes in is what is known as reputation in the community. This is critical. And this is an example of one way, not the only way, to question a witness to see if their testimony is admissible because just because there's evidence doesn't mean it's admissible in a court of law. It has to follow a very strict set of rules and both sides fight over what's allowed and what's not. Williams rule information being a classic example of what is fought over. Well, reputation in the community hearsay is fought over, so questions need to be asked such as, do you know so-and-so? Or, do you know of so-and-so? Do you know other people in the community? What community is that? How large is this community? Well, I know all 300 people in my high school. Well, it's in the community of Palatka, and Palatka is a very uh, small town, and everybody knows everybody. Or 
some other community like that, community of a large workplace, for example. The definition of community has really changed as times have changed, technology has changed, how people interact with other people has changed. But you have to establish reputation in the community, not so-and-so lies to me, but so-and-so has a reputation for being dishonest in the community. So you ask the witness if they know the person, know of the person, know other people in the community, a lot of questions about that. And then what is their reputation? Now, when it comes to crimes of violence, which is beyond the scope of the sex offense series, it's quite similar. Did the defendant who is on trial or going to be on trial know that a particular person who ends up being the accuser, did they know that that person had a reputation for violence? So reputation evidence, although it's hearsay, does come in and both sides can use it. So with the defense of a sexual battery case, traveling to meet a minor, child pornography, a number of different cases, these defenses will not apply at all. Yet in different cases with the same charges, because the facts are different, those defenses may apply and they may either damage or destroy the prosecution's case. If you have questions related to evidence, hearsay, or even the Williams rule about a sex offense or any other kind of case, my name is Stephen G. Cobb. I've been practicing criminal law since 1990, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.